There you go. Are they going to pay him also, those two? What? Those two couple, that couple? Yeah. How long? I'm not sure. I don't know. But you know, one thing is also, Prajapati donated a bunch of things that are in there. Huh? About a few months ago, he donated things, Prabhupada paraphernalia. Oh. He wanted to come and stay here, but we had no room. Oh. But some of the paraphernalia in our case there was donated by him. Okay. Wow, he was here just recently. No, Mala, he gave it to Madhava and Madhava gave it to us. Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Vrindavan. 
He is the lover of the coward maidens of Raj, the holder of the great hill named Govardhan, the beloved son of Mother Jasoda, and the delighter of the inhabitants of Raj. He wanders in the forest along the banks of the river Jamuna. Please repeat. Narayanam Namaskritya Narayanam Namaskritya Naram Chava Narottamam Naram Chava Narottamam Devim Saraswatim Vyasam Devim Saraswatim Vyasam Tato Jayam Udiraya Before reciting the Srimad Bhagavatam, before reciting Srimad Bhagavatam, which is the very means of conquest, which is the very means of conquest, one should offer respectful obeisances unto the personality of Godhead Narayan. One should offer respectful obeisances unto the personality of Godhead Lord Narayan. Unto Nar Narayan Rishi. Unto Nar Narayan Rishi. The supermost human being. The supermost human being. Unto the Mother Saraswati, the goddess of learning. Unto Mother Saraswati, the goddess of learning. And unto Srila Vyasadeva, the author. And unto Srila Vyasadeva, the author. Srinvatam Svakata Krishna. Srinvata Svakata Krishna. Punya Shravana Kirtana. Punya Shravana Kirtana. Vridhyanta Stoya Bhadrani. 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 Shri Krishna, the personality of Godhead. Shri Krishna, the personality of Godhead. Who is the Paramatma, the super soul in everyone's heart. Who is the Paramatma, the super soul in everyone's heart. And the benefactor of the truthful devotee. And the benefactor of the truthful devotee. Cleanses desire for material enjoyment from the heart of the devotee. Cleanses the desire. What was it? Cleanses desire for material enjoyment. Cleanses the desire for material enjoyment. From the heart of the devotee. From the heart of the devotee. Who has developed the urge to hear his message. Who has developed an urge to hear his messages. Which are in themselves. Which are in themselves. Virtuous when properly heard and chanted. Which are virtuous when properly heard and chanted. Nastapareshu Padreshu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavatama Shloke Bhagavatama Shloke Bhaktir Bhavati Naishtuki Bhaktir Bhavati Naishtuki By regular attendance in classes on the Bhagavatam by regular attendance in classes on the Bhagavatam. And by the rendering of service to the pure devotee. And by the rendering of service to the pure devotee. All that is troublesome to the heart. All that is troublesome to the heart. Is almost completely destroyed. Is almost completely destroyed. And loving service unto the personality of Godhead. And loving service unto the personality of Godhead. Who is praised with transcendental songs. Who is praised with transcendental songs. Is established as an irrevocable fact. Is established as an irrevocable fact. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Reading from the Srimad Bhagavatam, the second canto, chapter 9, text 25. Please repeat. Brahmo Vacha, Brahma Vacha, Bhagavan, Bhagavan, Sarva, Sarva, Bhutanam, Bhutanam, Bhagavan Sarva Bhutanam, Bhagavan Sarva Bhutanam, Adyaksho, Adyaksho, Vastito, Vastito, Guham, Guham, Adyaksho, Vastito, Guham, Adyaksho, Vastito, Guham, 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 Veda, Veda. Wait, wait, wait. Is there before Veda? Is there a word Guham? A G U H A M. Yes. Guham. Guham. Yeah. Well, that's at the end. Is we have it at the end of the second line. Yeah. 
Okay. He just said it twice. That's oh, okay. All right. yeah. Yeah, oh, I'm sorry. I, yeah, Guyo. Mm -hmm. Okay. And it's, for some reason, we want to say Guyo, which. Guyo. Veda. Veda. He. He. Aprati Rudena. Aprati Rudena. Pra. Okay. Veda ya prati rudena. Veda ya prati rudena. Prajna nena. Prajna nena. Chikir sitam. Chikir sitam. Prabhuji, just if there is a mark here, you have to add a avashita. 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 Okay. The second word in the second line. It's called Avagra. So that should be an A then? Yeah, if there is a mark like that. Oh, the mark like that? that? Oh, yes. Anytime you see that, you have to add an A there. Ooh. So the beginning it's of the word, right? It's a terrible stuff. I've never heard anyone say it. Sorry? I mean, it's very subtle, right? Very yeah. subtle. Yeah. So when you read it, it's actually a bit A. I was trying to read it, and they would do that. They put the A, but, it's, it, but they don't lose this rhythm. This abyss. Yeah. Sit down. Abyss. So, abyss, sit down. Yes. Yeah, that's the goal. Okay. Thank you. Brahmo Vacha. Brahmo Vacha. Bhagavan Savabhutanam. Bhagavan Savabhutanam. Aryaksho Avastito Guham. Aryaksho Avastito Guham. Ame Vedaya Prati Rudena. Vedaya Gurudena. Prajna nena chikyushitam Prajna nena chikyushitam Brahmo vacha Brahmo vacha Bhagavan sarvabhutanam Bhagavan sarvabhutanam Adyaksho avastito guham Adyaksho avastito guham Veda ya prati rudena Veda ya prati rudena Okay. Why don't you do it first so that we get it right? Brahmo Vacha, Brahmo Vacha, Bhagavan Sarva Bhutana, Bhagavan Sarva Bhutana, Yaksho Vashito Guham, Ajaksho Avasito Guham, Veda Hi Dena, Veda Hi Aparachunena, Pragyane. Prajnana Chakirshita Brahma Uvacha Bhagavan Sarva Bhutanam Bhagavan Sarva Bhutanam Ajaksha Avisto Guyam Ajaksha Avisto Guyam Veda Hi Apriti Rudena Veda Hi Apriti Rudena Prajnana Na Chakirshitam Prajnana Chakirshitam Brahmo Vacha Brahmo Uvacha Bhagavan Sarva Bhutanam Bhagavan Sarva Bhutanam Adyaksa Avastito Guham Adyaksa Avastito Guham Veda Hi Aparatu Rudena Veda Hi Aparatu Rudena Prajana Nina Chikirsitam Prajana Nina Chikirsitam Brahmo Vacha Bhagavan Sarva Bhutanam Adyaksa Avastito Guham Adyaksa Avastito Guham in the uh, word for word, um, Avastitaha, the A is actually there. You actually see the A. Mm. Interesting, huh? Mm. Please repeat. Brahma Uvacha. Brahma Uvacha. Lord Brahma said, Bhagavan, oh my Lord, Sarva Bhutanam, of all living entities, Adyaksha, Director, Avastitaha, Situated, Guham, within the 
heart. Veda. Veda. No. He. He. Certainly. Certainly. Aprapti rudena. rudena. Without hindrance. Without hindrance. Prajnanena. By super intelligence. By super intelligence. Jakir sitam. Endeavors. Yes. Translation, please repeat. Lord Brahma said, Lord Brahma said, O personality of Godhead, O personality of Godhead, you are situated in every living entity's heart. You are situated in every living entity's heart. As a supreme director. As a supreme director. And therefore, and therefore, you are aware of all endeavors. You are aware of all endeavors. By your superior intelligence. By your superior intelligence. Without any hindrance whatsoever. Without any hindrance whatsoever. Uh, I'll, I'll read that again. Lord Brahma said, O personality of Godhead, you are situated in every living entity's heart as the Supreme Director, and therefore you are aware of all endeavors by your superintelligence without any hindrance whatsoever. Does anybody know the uh, verse? Because I looked, I looked and looked yes last night. I could not find it. But uh, you know that the living entity, the Lord sits in everyone's heart, directing the wanderings of all living entities who are seated as on a machine made of material energy. Was well, fifteen fifteen or something? Like no, that. no, it's similar. It's very similar. I know that one, and I know the other one too. It's just I can't remember where it's at in Bhagavad Gita. What is that? How does it start? What chapter is it? I don't know. 10 or 13? Ram, Ramane? No, I forgot the first line. The oh, the second I, line is, yeah. It seems so. Ramane is Sarabhutani and Sarabhutani. Yeah. Yeah, I know the verse, but I, the first line is similar to another verse. It's either Sarva or Sarvasha. You know, like 15-15, Sarvasha, Shana, Giri, Shadi, Vishto, you know, Sarvasha. But uh, the other one is almost exactly the same, talking about the Lord situated in the heart. I looked and looked last night, I, I could not find that. Well, there's one that starts, Riddhaya, um, I forget how it goes now. It's very similar also. It's either in the 13th or the 10th or something like that. Yeah. I used to read. I used to read that one to the motorcycle riders, and they loved it. The wanderings. They're wandering all over the country, of all the entities who are seen as on a machine, yeah. made of material energy. They That's love perfect. that verse. That's perfect. Yeah. Yeah, they love that verse. You know what? Krishna gave you the intelligence to say that. <laughs> but I mean, they're attracted. To that Krishna, was. That know? was. But that was perfect. Yeah. I mean, like that. They're over by Murari in Lynchburg. Every weekend, they're coming from all over, and then they, they're dressed like bikers, but they're doctors, they're lawyers, they're engineers, they yeah. we, they're weekend bikers. And they got loads of money in their pocket. <laughs> so yeah. if they want to give a donation, yeah, but because they, they can't take a book with them, they can't take a book with them. It's perfect. They can't. They have their wives with them, but they can't go shopping because we're on a bike. Sorry, <laughs> perfect excuse. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's 1861. Ishwara Sarabhutana. There it is. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ishvara starts similar. Another verse starts Ishvara Sarabhutana. Wow, thank you, Prabhu. Thank you so much. What's the English? They're like sitting at. You said 1861? Yeah, the Supreme Lord is situated in everyone's heart, O Arjuna, and is directing the wanderings of all living beings. Who are seated as on a machine made of material energy. Wow, so close. I opened the 18, I was open to 1858. So it's really close. But yet so far. So. Yeah, yeah, so far. There it is. 1861. Ishvara Sarva Bhutana. Yeah. It's like um, when uh, Sadaputta back in the early 90s, like 1990, he was talking about what became, uh, what do you call it, uh, virtual, you know, the, when they put on the headset and you see the virtual reality, 
He was saying, actually, that what we are is we're not we're we're in this virtual reality. Not, we're sitting sitting here inside, but it's not we're not really in it. We're it's just like being in a virtual reality, like a like a video game. And Super Soul Boxing too. I mean, I look yeah. at the show. That's what I He's watching, He's watching everything. It's very about you think Why about are you so sad? it. Well, there was a huge movie recently, about maybe a year ago, Steven Spielberg. It was all virtual reality. Everybody lived in poverty. Trailer parks stacked upon trailer upon trailer upon trailer in America even. And uh, there was a master creator who created this other world you could go into. And the more things you bought, virtual reality merchandise, then the more you could enter into that other world. Whoa. And uh, yeah, it's uh, pretty fascinating. I mean, you become another character. You can have probably as many characters as you wanted, but just like uh, our real self is in the spiritual world, of course. This is just an illusion here. But anyway, it's becoming like that slowly, slowly but surely. So, um, so the purport, Ace Bhaktivedanta Swami Shri Prabhupada Ki Jai. Jai, The Bhagavad Gita confirms that the Lord is situated in everyone's heart as the witness, and as such, He is the supreme director of sanction. The director is not the enjoyer of the fruits of action, for without the Lord's sanction, no one can enjoy. For example, in a prohibited area. The habituated drunkard puts forward his application to the director of drinking, and the director, considering that his case, sanctions only a certain amount of liquor for drinking. Similarly, the, the whole material world is full of many drunkards, in a sense that each and every one of the living entities has something in his mind to enjoy, and every one desires the fulfillment of his desires very strongly. The Almighty Lord, being very kind to the living entity, as the Father is kind to the Son, fulfills the living entity's desire for his childish satisfaction. With such desires in mind, the living entity does not actually enjoy it. He, he serves the bodily whims, unnecessarily without profit. The drunkard does not derive any profit out of drinking, but because he has become a servant of the drinking habit, and does not wish to get out of it, the merciful Lord gives him all facilities to fulfill such desires. The impersonalists recommend that one should become desireless, and others recommend banishing desires altogether. That is impossible. No one can banish desires altogether, because desiring is the living symptom. Without having desires, a living entity would be dead, which he is not. Therefore, living conditions and desire go together. Perfection of desires may be achieved when one desires to serve the Lord. And the Lord also desires that every living entity banish all personal desires and cooperate with his desires. That is the last instruction of the Bhagavad Gita. Brahmaji agreed to this proposal, and therefore he is given the responsible post of creating generations in the vacant universe. Oneness with the Lord therefore consists of dovetailing one's desire with the desires of the Supreme Lord. That makes for the perfection of all desires. The Lord, as the super soul in the heart of every living being, knows what is in the mind of each living entity, and no one can do anything without the knowledge of the Lord within. By his superior intelligence, the Lord gives everyone the chance to fulfill his desires to the fullest extent, and the resultant reaction is also awarded by the Lord. By his, the Lord's, superior intelligence, the Lord gives everyone the chance to fulfill his desires to the fullest extent, and the resultant reaction is also awarded by the Lord. So I'll read that translation again. 
Lord Brahma said, O personality of Godhead, you are situated in every living entity's heart as a supreme director, and therefore you are aware of all endeavors by your superior intelligence without any hindrance whatsoever. <laughs> I just realized if I meet any directors, I can read this one. There's a supreme director, a director of movies, you know, and all that. Lord Brahma said, O oh, personality of Godhead, you are seated in every living entity's heart as the supreme director. And therefore you are aware of all endeavors by your superior intelligence without any hindrance whatsoever. Anyway, it's true that like, if you are a director in a movie, you have to be aware of everybody and everything and the direction that everything is going and the budget. They have a person constantly every day. They have to. They can ask them any time over the radio, what's the cost for the day so far? And they have to know what's the cost is running them to that hour that each day. I, I saw it in person. I was like, you know, it's pretty amazing. And the guy right over the right over the radio came right back with the amount. It's up to that hour that day. That was on the set of uh, New Orleans. What's it called? It, I NCIS New Orleans. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's it. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, one of those uh, act, that woman. She goes to uh, uh, Sugosha's restaurant. She goes where? She, Sugosha's restaurant uh, in New Orleans. She, she came here for a Sunday feast. Oh, she did? Yeah. Wow, too bad I missed. Yeah. I didn't know at the time. So you were on the set because you were doing something there? Yeah, I was an extra oh. for two days. Funny. The first day they had 500 extras, the second day they had 800. It was Mardi Gras, you know. Wow. Three floats, and they let us, I got pictures of it, they let us dress full, head to toe in the actual uh, costumes they actually used. The Rex, the Rex. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, what were they paying? And believe it or not, there was a big, beautiful white cow. It was as big as a car, three times as high as a car, with a garland. But what did they pay? Oh, just a hundred bucks a day. Yeah. You might be there six hours. You might be there 12 hours. Hmm. There are a lot of devotees in L.A. Used to, that's what they used to do. Yeah, Gorvani yeah, movie. Gorvani? Yeah, you know Gorvani, yeah, the famous Gorvani. Yeah. There's, um, I forget the movie, I, a long, long time ago, he was very young, he actually got killed. He got killed? <laughs> <laughs> By the crazy yeah. killer. Oh, no. But, uh, oh, God. See, the, the store, right? There's a, a lot of other movies in the, uh, but they, if you look carefully, you're going to see, you know, some devotee, because they were doing it all, I don't know if they still do it, but. Yeah. Well, see, they're lucky because I have to drive all the way from up here, all the way down. <laughs> It's usually New Orleans, and if they're already there, it's well, so it's not. It's not. It's not. It's a little bit further away. But it depends. Because yeah. uh, I mean, you got to be there at least by five every morning. You know. It depends. I mean, if you're at the Culver City Studio. Yeah, that's, that's another. That's right across right. the street. But it, if you have to go to Universal Studios, then that's. I I made a commercial. Forty-five minutes. Hour. Are you talking about L.A. or what's? Well, I'm talking about in L.A. Yeah. Oh, I thought it was New Orleans. Uh -huh. No, no. Oh. I I was in a commercial in L.A. in 1989. Me and two other brownies. I had to wear saffron. I was, you know, in between wives, <laughs> and uh, uh, so, and I was shaved up at the time. So, um, and it was for this new. It was uh, the Geo had just come out, and uh, so they wanted. And this the felt the director. He would eat at the rest. The restaurant used to be on what's the street that is, you know, per perpendicular to the temple. Mm -hmm. Venice, yeah. Oh, yeah, Venice. It, that's where the, the restaurant used to be. He used to go and eat there. Yeah. Right, yeah. And uh, he, so we started, to, he said he, what he wanted was this woman walking down the street. She looks at the G.O. And then in the background, it's supposed to be these, like, an ecstatic kirtan. So we, we were, you know, doing our bit. And he said, no, 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 no. No, you, you got to do, you know, I, I want ecstatic kirtan. And if you can't do it, if you can't dance ecstatically, I'll come down there and show you myself. <laughs> yeah, that's what they yeah, yeah, do. yeah. <laughs> that's and, what they usually do, you know. Yeah, so, yeah, I should have said, okay, why don't you? <laughs> but uh, anyway, we did it. And then uh, I, it was only played on the West Coast, though, for some reason. 
Yeah, things like that happened. You know? And then, uh, so they paid us, I think it was 100 or 150 but the deal was, uh, we, and I didn't care, it was right before the Rath Yatra, so we had donated to the Rath Yatra. Oh. Okay, so here's the first verse uh, in Bhagavad Gita that obviously Rao is talking about. Ishvara Savra Bhutanam, Dine Shakuna Tishtati, Ramayan Sarva Bhutani, Jantrudani Maya. The Supreme, Pers the Supreme Lord is situated in everyone's heart, Arjuna, and is directing the wanderings of all living entities, or is seated as on a machine made of the material energy. And normally, when I read to like the motorcycle guys, I read it two or three times. And the more you read it, the more like, wow, they're, they're really getting it. You know, like that, you know. Uh, purport by Srila Prabhupada, Arjuna was not the supreme knower, and his decision to fight or not to fight was confined to his limited discretion. Lord Krishna instructed that the individual soul is not all in all. The supreme personality Godhead, or he, he himself, Krishna, the localized super soul, sits in the heart directing the living being. After changing bodies, the living entity forgets his past deeds. But the super soul, as the knower of the past, present, and future, remains the witness of all his activities. Therefore, all the activities of the living entities are directed by this super soul. The living entity gets what he deserves and is carried by the material body, which is created in the material energy under the direction of the super soul. As soon as a living entity is placed in a particular type of body, he has to work under the spell of that bodily situation. Wow, that's an amazing way to say it. A person seated in a high-speed motor car goes faster than one seated in a slower car. Though the living entities, the drivers, may be the same. Similarly, by the order of the Supreme Soul, material nature fashions a particular type of body to a particular type of living entity to work as according to his past desires. The living entity is not independent. One should not think himself independent of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. The individual is always under his, capital H, his control. Therefore, his duty is to surrender and that is the injunction of the next verse. And the next verse uh, translation is oh, s s okay, Prabhuji, how would you say Sion or Skyon? Is it Sion? Oh, Sion of Bharata. Oh, Sion, yeah. Sion? Sion, yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's kind of what I figured, you know. It's an old English word. Yeah. Oh, Sion of Bharata, surrender unto him utterly. By His grace, you will attain transcendental peace and the supreme and eternal abode. O Sion of Bharata, surrender unto Him utterly. By His grace, you will attain transcendental peace and the supreme and eternal abode. So, uh, as Prophet says, uh, we're talking about this this morning, you know, I wonder what he was talking about being transcendental or probably not transcendental, trying to be transcendental. Mm -hmm. You know, we're trying to be transcendental. And of course, in Bhagavad Gita, uh, Krishna says that, you know, you can't have peace without a controlled mind and senses. You know, what's it, and then what's the question of happiness without, without peace? peace. <laughs> yeah. sure. No, I just think she put those verses to a melody on the second Marauder Band album. It's beautiful. Wow. It's really can you amazing. sing it? Huh? Can you sing it? Not as good as she can. Try. <laughs> no, I don't, I don't think so. <laughs> and how can there be any happiness without peace? Do, do. She had a beautiful piano part there. Was she playing the piano? Or yeah, she played the piano. And, the, or, 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 and guitar. So you'll probably also have the harmonium. Well, who was yeah. that? My first wife. No, right? No, yeah. Is it on YouTube? Yeah, you know, it might be. I don't know. Um, oh, that's what that, uh, they, um, it was under the Marai band, but I think Bala Budgers made it so that you have to pay to hear. Mm. 
Well, it used to be, and, and I can't find my CDs, but I have the old, the original LPs, the actual records. Which room was your rehearsal room? Because I was up there one day, uh, you know what I mean? It what, was Mar? on the second floor, I think. You mean Atlanta? Yeah. Well, we, I, I had a, an actual place that we rehearsed, but for a little while we rehearsed um, downstairs, and, oh. and, and then once we, for a while, we upstairs to the left. Oh, to the left, that yeah, room to the left. Yeah. Up in there. Okay, that makes sense. Okay, I figured it out. I was wondering what room that was. And this is the time, right? Like the party party, right? Like, yeah. June or July, June, right? Yeah. Yeah, we it's used not to happening. all these people from here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Gang up over there. And we right. Over the same, you know? And there was a time when then the, then it was a time when we would come here for like July Fourth or something. And then we'll go there. Yeah, yeah. The, it was well, nice. Well, that and zone. Yes, we did that with the children and the family and all that. And that band will really sing that you know, we're already over there. And how can they? I, I, I can't say. I try I to sing it. I can't. I can't get the melody. Just see, I'm I'm not doing it justice. But it's beautiful. So here's the other the other verse. 1515. I'm seated in everyone's heart, and in front of me come remembrance, knowledge, and forgetfulness. By all the Vedas am I to be known. Indeed, I am the compiler of Vedanta, and I am the knower of the Vedas. Purport by Sri the Prabhupada. The Supreme Lord is situated as Paramatma in everyone's heart, and it is from Him that all activities are initiated. The living entity forgets everything of his past life. See, this is just going just like that other purport to the other verse, because it's so simple, you know. Um, but He has to act according to the direction of the Supreme Lord who is witness to all his work. Therefore, he begins his work according to his past deeds. Required knowledge is supplied to him, and remembrance is given to him, and he forgets also about his past life. Thus the Lord is not only all-pervading, he is also localized in every individual heart. He awards the different food of, of results. He is not only worshipable as the impersonal Brahman, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, and localized Paramatma, but as the form of the incarnation of the Vedas as well. The Vedas give the right direction to the people so that they can properly mold their lives and come back to Godhead, back to home. The Vedas offer knowledge of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Krishna. And Krishna in his incarnation as Vyasadeva is the compiler of the Vedanta Sutra. The, com the commentation on the Vedanta Sutra by Vyasadeva in the Srimad Bhagavatam gives the real understanding of the Vedanta Sutra. The Supreme Lord is so full that for the deliverance of the conditioned soul, He is the supplier and digester of foodstuff, the witness of His activity, the giver of knowledge in the form of Vedas, and as the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Sri Krishna, the teacher of the Bhagavad Gita. He is worshipable by the conditioned soul. Thus God is all good. God is all merciful. Shasta Yananam The living entity forgets as soon as he quits his present body, but he begins his work again, initiated by the Supreme Lord. Although he forgets, the Lord gives him the intelligence to renew his work where he has ended his last life. So not only does a living entity enjoy or suffer in this world according to the dictation from the Supreme Lord, situated locally in the heart, but he receives the opportunity to understand Vedas from him. If one is serious to understand the Vedic knowledge, then Krishna gives the required intelligence. Why does he present the Vedic knowledge for understanding? Because a living entity individually needs to understand Krishna. Vedic literature confirms this. Yosa Saver Vader Giyate. In all Vedic literature, beginning from the four Vedas, Vedanta Sutra, and the Upanishads and Puranas, the glories of the Supreme Lord are celebrated by performing Vedic rituals, discussing the Vedic philosophy, and worshiping the Lord in devotional service, he is attained. By performing Vedic rituals, discussing Vedic philosophy, 
and worshiping the Lord in devotional service, he is attained. Therefore, the purpose of the Vedas is to understand him. The Vedas give us direction to understand Krishna and the process of understanding. The ultimate goal is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Vedanta Sutra confirms this in the following words. Taught to Samaya Vaya. One can attain perfection by understanding Vedic literature, and one can understand his relationship with the Supreme Personality of Godhead by performing the different processes. Thus one can approach him and at the end attain the Supreme Goal, who is no other than the Supreme Personality of Godhead. In this verse, however, the purpose of the Vedas, the understanding of the Vedas, and the goal of the Vedas are clearly defined. Any questions or comments? You know, another thing... I, I, I just got a question. Yeah. Well, go ahead, everyone. Go ahead. Go ahead. He, 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 I didn't have a question. He okay, a question. well, uh, if I get this straight, so the Lord is watching our activities, and the demigods are heard to watch our activities, so it's like reality TV. So if someone becomes more aware and not their body, they should also be watching what's going on, right? Does that make sense? And, then, and that would be transcendental? So I'm, my question is that someone might be going through a really difficult time, and they might catch themselves and think, well, I'm not the body, I'm transcendental, why am I so carried away by this? But at the same time, we hear things like, oh, you can't repress your emotions, you got to let it out, you got to process it, you got to talk about it, you should talk, think about it. You know, it's like, for me, talking about it is dwelling on it. And then you contemplate, and what happens? You just get more entangled, because you might do something crazy. Does that make sense? Yeah, you know, we uh, to do? Well, unless it's for Krishna. Let me maybe clarify this, but it seems like some, it might have been a long time ago, but I heard... I thought Prabhupada said that the devotees are demigods. What what did that come from? <laughs> well, well no. Is, Brahmanas are known as earthly gods. I mean, it, it, anyone who's a devotee is considered like a de you know, in the sense that we're there's the asuras and the and the demigods, but right. we're not like right, right, right. It's not. Yeah. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, but that's what Prabhupada said. There's only two two types. Devotees and asura and side so, but um. To her point, uh, there's some, you know, uh, that uh, Yogendra Prabhu had, I don't know if we still have them, but in the, here, he, he got these books the, from Jiva Goswami, the very erudite, the Sundarvas. And um, it, one of them was the Paramatma Sundarva. And I just read a couple of verses one day before Mangalartik, and it said that when one becomes Paramatma realized, now that's an elevated stage. Then when you, therefore, you see the Paramatma within your heart. Now sometimes people get confused and think, oh, that's who I am. I'm God. But if he's a devotee, he realizes this is Paramatma, this is Krishna. But if I see Paramatma in my heart, I can see the Paramatma in your heart. So then I can know what's in your heart. That's why when devotees would say, Srila Prabhupada looked at me and he was looking right through me. He knew me. Because he saw Paramatma. And the Jiva. I'm sorry, I shouldn't point like that. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, here's the thing. Uh, everybody knows this. We're all, we know this. We're all spiritual beings. We're all a soul. We know this. You know, we study it every day. You know, I mean, we're supposed to know. We're trying. Yeah, 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 we're trying. We're trying, we're trying to be transcendental, is yeah. what you said. Can I have a comment that level? Yeah, me especially. But you know, we're just right there. You know, we just we yeah. travel all this way, and we're like right there. So if, if we could just always be remembering Krishna every minute of every day, mm -hmm. then of course, I mean, whatever Krishna wants to trust us with, you know, He can mm -hmm. show us. Mm -hmm. But anyway, uh, little things like I like to look at is uh, just little realizations myself is when you're in Walmart and you're used to, you're looking for people wherever you're at, you know, you're just looking for the opportunity where they, they you know, there's a nice connection. Somehow there's a nice connection. Mm -hmm. And uh, they're, they're favorable toward you, you know. And then, so, and it could be anything. Mm -hmm. It could be anything. It, the yogurt aisle is one of my favorite, you know, because... 
yogurt people, they can, they can be vegetarians. Yogurt. But you can talk about all of them. Oh, I thought you said the yoga aisle. There's a yoga aisle? That's what the commies think I was saying, too. Yeah. Yeah. In the lettuce aisle, yeah. Yeah, you yeah, got the produce. Produce, yeah. That yeah. What about you see someone over by like the meatless, like the yeah, yeah, the meatless thing, the vegan, yeah, plant-based. Uh, yeah, popular. yeah. Very popular. Yeah, I never thought of that before. But that, see, that's that's the mind of a of a book distributor. He's got the mind of a book distributor. He's looking, he's looking for someone to, you know, to, you know. Well, I'm just thinking, I'm just looking like. How do I get out of here as soon as possible? <laughs> well, to, to, to tell you the truth, little... used to be like that. But I'm trying to look for those opportunities to see Krishna's the doer. So he's lining it up. It's like I'm going to land on an aircraft carrier, and I know i got to land. So I might as well cooperate with what they're telling me down there. Yeah. And all the, all the signals that they're giving me and yeah. everything. And then do the best I can to no, make, actually make the landing. But I feel guilty if I sh oh, and just overshoot it and just go on around mm -hmm. and ignore that person. <laughs> right. <laughs> then, then if we get lucky, you might get another attempt uh, to make contact with that person. Because sometimes for a whole week, yeah, I know I shouldn't talk to that person. I'd be bugged about it for a whole week. Well, so wearing, the, like wearing that Jagannath hat, and, and of course the neckies, but the Jagannath hat always, the other day actually, yeah. uh, and I can't remember her name, but... You know, she was like a manager of the cashiers. And um, she comes over and she's looking at us and Colleen's talking to the cashier. And I thought she was annoyed because Colleen likes to get into conversations to distract them or whatever. And um, she goes, uh, Harry Ball. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, ma the manager. And it turns out she's the daughter of a woman that lived here for a while something like Stephanie or something, mm -hmm. and she went to Maine, she moved up to Maine. Mm -hmm. And so she goes, Hi, right, Bob, how are you all doing at the farm? Mm -hmm. go, oh, good, how are you doing? Hi, right, Bob. Mm -hmm. you know, I, I know if it was a Guru Kuli or whatever. But those things happen, yeah. You want to say something too much, yeah? Uh, it's okay, yeah. Um, a couple of things you said, I mean, we've been hearing about desire uh, every class here, you know. First of all, thank you for your class, and it's always interesting. Yeah. We always hear about movies Great time, right? in this class. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, you said material body means desire. You said that earlier today, just now. I mean, you have to have a desire. You have to have desire. And then we have been hearing, you should you know, worship Krishna without any desire, you know. So it's just really difficult to be in this body. Material no, desire. Material yeah. desire. But actually, what, what he's, if I remember, the living entity is, uh, if there's no meaning of a living entity without desire. Of course, the material body is a manifestation of our previous desires, but the living entity cannot desire, stop desiring. Right. The living entity, just the, uh, yeah. that's your, who you, you, you know, so that's what the people and the, these, the living entities in the, in the Brahma Jyoti are trying to restrain. Uh, instead of pointing, should I, should I point or should I do like this? Go like that. Go, <laughs> go like that. With my oh, I'm sorry. You should, you should crawl <laughs> over. No, you should crawl <laughs> over. Uh, and crawl <laughs> over and pay your obeisances. Prabhu? I did that. So, back to what I was saying about oh, the desire. Uh, you, you're seeing Krishna, you're worshipping Krishna, and you have this desire to serve him in so many different, you know, so many different ways. And then we heard from Mother Dana Kelly too that you, that, that you have to be careful because it could be material, yeah. even doing for Krishna. Like she gave an example of uh, uh, Krishna's father and mother, you know, um, yeah, Vyasadev and uh, Devaki. Devaki. Like that, that was, they were Krishna conscious and having him them as the child also, it was a subtle material so. Someone who's always wanting to do so many things for Krishna, and that you know, have to be careful. I did not realize until she said it that you're probably thinking, "Oh, I'm going to do this for Krishna," so that somebody will say, "Oh, yeah, you did a great job," you know, yeah. <laughs> you know something like that. That's what I found was interesting yesterday. Was yeah, it's such a nice class that one. Yeah, no. it just went straight to the heart. Because it was the motive behind. It. It's yeah. okay to desire. That's what I got. It. Yeah, it's okay to desire, but you have to always check what is my motive. Yes. And sometimes I think it's really hard to see a motive because look at Daksha. He thought he was right, you know, cursing Shiva. He thought, you know, I have a good reason, blah, blah, blah. 
And he was actually totally wrong. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you, like, like a pure devotee, you go in, well, no one ever knew what Prabhupada was going to say mm -hmm. or how he was going to react. Be, something that might be totally different than what you thought, mm -hmm. you know? So, how, how he might react. But he's a pure devotee, so he knows exactly what is right and wrong. And then we stand corrected so many times, you know. Well, yeah. uh, are you through my team? No, no, I'm not. Yes, Just back to the point of uh, like meeting favorable people. You can actually create favorable situations too. I used to uh, bring a Tupperware of uh, something wonderful with raisins, you know. <laughs> and like any time I went to a cashier or anything, or anyway, any time I got a chance, I would. But I was, I, I did have an online cooking show at the time, so I'd be like, I have an online cooking show, and I want to get your opinion on this. And so wow. I'd give them like, something wonderful, and they'd be like, it's very nice. Oh, <laughs> and like, explain it all kinds God. of like, different yeah. things about it. It's like, like, I really like the raisins. It really gives it a nice place. You know, it's it's really simply good. wonderful. It's, it's like, yeah, so it's nice. a nice way to, nice way to uh, meet people and just talk about Well, I, I mean, I want to give you an example of something that just happened to me. Because yeah. uh, within the last week, uh, I went to Rouse's, you know. Mm -hmm. So I gave class last Thursday. And I had two beautiful garlands. Mm -hmm. Oh, they were so beautiful. Mm -hmm. And I thought, oh, I'll take these today. Mm -hmm. I'm going. I thought, oh, I haven't really met anybody. And my, you know, we have so many garlands over the winter where they, they just mm -hmm. drop petals everywhere you go, mm -hmm. which is not a good thing. Um, so anyway, um, I didn't take them. They were right there. I could have taken them. Just a little extra mm -hmm. effort, you know. Mm -hmm. So anyway, so later in the day, I was at Rouse's and... Uh, there was a lady, I saw her in a parking lot going in, I said, wow, she's dressed like a devotee. Mm -hmm. She's obviously not a devotee, but she's dressed mm -hmm. like the ladies on the farm, you know. I said, oh, you know, maybe I'll make a connection somewhere in there. Mm -hmm. And so eventually I met her in the produce department, you know. I said, are you vegetarian? Mm -hmm. Are you a member of a religious group, you know? And she said, well, sort of, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, I said, uh, you dress like the Mataji's, the ladies on our farm, mm -hmm. you know. I said, you know, Hare Krishna, we have a farm, it's a 100 acre farm, whatever. He says, oh yeah, Hare Krishna, yeah. Um, she said, uh, you know, there was a lady who gave me a garland. Madhu Maharani. Madhu yeah. Maharani, yeah. yeah. And she said, uh, it's kind of older now, mm -hmm. but uh, but I still have that garland. Uh, wow, I said, that's going back. I said, I said to her, I said, Krishna's kicking me in the butt right now. now. There you go. <laughs> because I had two garlands I could have brought you. And she had to say, uh, I, yeah, Amadaji gave me a garland. You know, you know, that's probably at least 12, 15 years ago. Yeah. She was, maybe you would never forget. Maybe, maybe she did, was doing it after I left. But. The thing is that this is what she'll do. She'll, she, when she used to be all of us together, she'll take them and she'll give it to everyone. And then you go behind, you'll see this garland hanging. In, in the, 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 the nail the, shop, the, the tire place, everywhere, tire place. On, on the Virgin Mary at the in the yard of the church. <laughs> You're driving by and she, wow, they put garlands the on there now. <laughs> <Father everywhere. laughs> uh, so who is this? French, French Maharani. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, anybody else need those? I just brought uh, two garlands, I mean a whole bunch of garlands to the characters in Picayune and Chiropractor. And this, this therapist guy is like, you know, so close to everybody, so nice, you know, down to earth, you know, it's about us. And we have some connection, they appreciate it. And we bring him, I brought him like a dozen cookies, you know. And oh, he was so nice. happy. Oh, wow. Yeah, is that the one, what, is that the one on 43rd Street? Or? Yes, that, the tall one. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, 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 he did a lot of work with Colleen. Yeah. Yes. Our glory is a symbol of devotees, yes. our glory is a part for all, our glory is just going to tie, she's right about a country. I go as in the Taliban, cow protection. I go as Bob Gishu and Bob Tom. I go as your Papa Ki. Jay, thank you. I go as your Papa's. This is so nice. This is an elite group here. Yeah. You, oh, yesterday's class was like phenomenal. It was so good, you know? This lady can really speak about yeah. things. And She's it's very, straight to heart. She's oh. very good. Uh, I, I did not.